Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Fundamental Analysis webinar here with Ava Trade. My name is Troy. I'll be presenting. As we get going, let's do a quick systems check. If you would, type OK in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. All right, great. Thank you. Looks like we're up and running fine. If anyone has any issues as we go along, feel free uh, to let me know. As always, keep in mind uh, that there's risk involved with trading. Uh, no one trade is guaranteed to make profits, so you want to manage risk on the downside uh, one way or another uh, to keep things within your risk tolerance, maybe using stop loss, alpha protect, uh, different methods for, for managing risk with trade size as well. Uh, but in one way or another, uh, make sure you're thinking about the risk side of things. Uh, also keep in mind that what we cover is not meant to be financial advisement, but is coming from an educational perspective. Now uh, we'll go over, by the way, in terms of risk management, some nice tools that make it very simple, very easy to manage your risk. Uh, and I'll show some of those tools as we go along within our strategies today on the live charts. Uh, so real quick for anyone who's new to things, what is fundamental analysis? Basically, it is uh, looking at the news. Uh, there are different types of news, but looking at the news and figuring out how that might affect the movements uh, of different financial instruments that you might be interested in trading on. And so uh, today we're going to have, have a look at some announcements that are coming uh, today and tomorrow on the economic calendar. I'll show you how we can use some data analysis to work out a trading plan around those announcements. Uh, it could be something that you're interested in, in enacting, and there are a couple different ways you can carry it out, and I'll explain that as we go. Uh, and so that's one type of fundamental news, uh, you know, regular economic type of events that are scheduled on an economic calendar, things that you know when they'll be, what they'll be about, uh, et cetera. Another type of fundamental news is the extraordinary type. Uh, that type is harder to know what it'll be or when it will be, but you can still prepare for that type of news. Uh, examples in the past have been uh, the, the Russian invasion into Ukraine that caught most by surprise and affected uh, commodity prices uh, that, that many traders thought might be affected out of Ukraine. Uh, wheat, specifically, some of the soft commodities, uh, the prices were, were definitely affected by that event. And, and many traders were able to take advantage of, of trading on those particular instruments that we offer. Uh, and, and there are other examples with, with the global pandemic, et cetera. Uh, you know, every headline that hit seemed to move the markets. And so you can be prepared for that, usually with pending orders in strategic locations uh, beyond uh, price levels that you think are important, that if they break through, it shows signs of momentum that, hey, another big story must have hit. Uh, and many times crude oil is something, gold is something uh, that reacts to those types of headlines as well. Uh, and, and if we have a chance, we'll go through that type of uh, strategy as well. But I think we're, we're mainly going to focus on these economic announcements because they're huge today and tomorrow. And I'll point out uh, which announcements and why as we go along. If you have any questions, you want to give any input, uh, feel free to do so in, in the chat box as we go along. And so from our main website, we have the option to use all of the advanced tools that we have, whether you have an MT4 account or an MT5 account, the advanced tools that I'm using, uh, you can trade on either of those types of accounts from our web trader and from our mobile app. Our mobile app, you can just keyword search in your app store on your mobile device, Avatrade Go. You can also find links for the downloads here under trading platform. If you look under the train platforms section, you'll see Avatry Go as an option. And from the Avatry page, uh, there are download lists for the major app stores. Okay, and all of the tools, whether it's Avatry Protect, uh, the trade calculator functions, the, the trading central features, all of those are available in our app as well as uh, our web trade. So to log into the web trader, you just click here uh, and you'll find yourself, once you enter your details, in our web trader. And now, uh, the fundamental tool, as I said, that I'd like to focus on here would be the economic calendar uh, for the session. And so if we go to the 
discovery section, go to the economic calendar. Uh, if anyone's new to my webinars, you might be thinking, okay, big deal, economic calendar. Uh, you can look at a lot of them, which is true. You can see the same announcements and maybe even in a nicer layout, uh, maybe prettier columns. Uh, but the power of this economic calendar, uh, the uniqueness of it is the fact that there are data analysis tools over here on the right-hand side built into the economic calendar, okay? It does analysis for you that could take you days to, to try and compile the data to look back at the last time the announcements came in, if it came in higher than expected, lower than expected, as expected, what kind of movement occurred on which currency pairings and how far did it go over different time frames, one hour, five minutes, four hours, all of that can be done with a few clicks here to understand what happened in the past, statistically speaking, uh, to maybe help that decide for you uh, what direction would you trade now once you see the numbers come in, okay? So we've got the previous numbers, we've got the forecasted numbers, and then when the, when the data comes in, we've got the actual numbers, okay? Let's look at today first, what's coming up today that hasn't happened yet. Uh, these already occurred, we could analyze what happened already, but I think to be most productive right now, we want to focus on what hasn't happened yet and what could you still take advantage of. So uh, this sticks out like a sore thumb, the inflation rate information, specifically it's the CPI data, the consumer pricing index data coming out of uh, the US. There's a hyper focus on this information because uh, I think we all realize at this point, inflation has been too high. The US has been raising interest rates again and again and again and again, trying to bring down inflation by, you know, the general idea is by raising interest rates, uh, it, it makes it harder to borrow money, makes it more expensive when there's higher interest rates. So with higher interest rates, it means it's more expensive to use credit cards, it's more expensive to get car loans, it's more expensive to get house loans, it's more expensive to get business loans, etc. And so uh, people spend less then because it costs more to get money in your hands. And so by raising interest rates, the, the hope has been that this will bring down inflation. Now, it also hurts the economic numbers, but right now that's kind of what uh, investors are looking for is to see that the inflation rate is dropping more than expected. And if they see that lately, what, what has happened is the markets have gone up with that, what is typically viewed as bad news. There's usually we wanna see a healthy amount of inflation. We don't wanna see inflation dropping, dropping, dropping. That's a sign of low demand and a slow economy. But right now, the opposite. Uh, over the past year plus, what we've seen is if the inflation rate comes in lower than expected, the markets have gone up cheering the fact that, hey, high inflation is finally coming down and it could mean a quicker end to the interest rate hikes, okay? So, and the opposite, if the inflation rate comes in higher than expected, yeah, that shows good demand for a healthy economy, but uh, when inflation rate is too high already, and uh, if it comes in higher than expected here, you could see the market sell off. At least that's what's been happening in the past. And and uh, and the U.S. dollar then strengthening rapidly with expectation that if inflation rate is still higher than expected, maybe more rate hikes have to come. So this has kind of been the relationship with the inflation rate. And, and you don't have to trust my analysis of it. You can just look at the data. That's the power of this tool. Uh, we come over here, we say, let's click on the volatility information surrounding this announcement. These are the past announcement dates okay for the cpi data uh and or what they're what we're calling inflation rate information that's the the cpi uh consumer pricing information and so uh if if we then say all right if if this comes in higher than expected above forecast what has happened in the past it's only happened twice in the past year and each time it caused uh, the USD to rapidly strengthen and pull the euro down. You see the average range movement here, 136 pips plus range movement in the four hours after the event. This is on the euro USD, four hours after the event. If the numbers came in higher than expected with the inflation data, uh, we see the USD strengthen, pull uh, the euro down. I mean, we see here in this, this case, 170 pips, here, uh, 
about 40 pips in the four hours after the event, giving, giving us an average range movement of 136 pips. Now, what we could say is, well, but that's after the numbers come in. Isn't it too late? Doesn't the movement go in the first 30 seconds? You have this huge move uh, on the chart. And we can, we can look at that and say, okay, well, what happened in the first five minutes? Average range movement, 87 pips. 87, 88 pips. Even going up one of the times. Okay, so if it went up, let's see, 31 pips in the first five minutes, or only dropped 80 pips in the first five minutes, what happened after four hours? It was down 170 pips. Remember, after five minutes, it was down 80. And after five minutes, this one was up 30 pips and ended up down almost 40 pips. So after the first five minutes, it wasn't too late to trade. You could already have saw the data and then traded. And if after five minutes, it was up 30 pips, and after four hours, it was down 30 to 40 pips, that's a huge potential profit. And the other example, after five minutes, you'd say, well, it's too late. It was down 80 pips already in five minutes. Well, maybe you could have traded after one minute after you saw the data. But let's say it took you five minutes, which is rather slow reaction. But if it took you five minutes, it's down 80, 90 pips. But look, after four hours, it was down 165 pips. So still not too late after five minutes, even if it already dropped 80 pips. My point is you don't have to uh, worry about trading before the announcement necessarily to take advantage of the momentum that comes from such an announcement. Now, you're not going to win every time. I know it shows 100% of the time it dropped if it was above forecast. But trust me, eventually it won't go the way that the, the past statistics show. Uh, and part of it's about timing, right? Maybe the example where it went up in the first five minutes, you would have traded on that one. But the one that already shot down in the first five minutes, maybe you skipped that one. It's up to you, right? It could be selective. But at least you understand what happened in the past. And, and the type of relationship I love is when if the opposite happens, if the numbers don't come in above forecast, if they come in below, look at the difference in statistics. 75% of the time it goes up. That's six out of eight events you would have won if you bought when the data came in lower than expected. So just as we were talking about before we looked at the data, lower than expected inflation seems to cause the USD to weaken with less expectation of rate hikes. And so you see the euro go flying up. Look, average range movement over 105 pips. Okay, so below forecast, vast majority of the time, 75% of the time, it goes up. Above forecast, the vast majority of the time, 100% of the time in the two times it happened, it drops. Okay, so you see an inverse relationship depending on how these numbers come in. And has it ever matched the forecast? Twice. And that caused a rise. Doesn't usually come in exactly as forecasted, but twice it did. And when it did, the euro went up against the USD. I tend to try and look at whether it's above or below because that tends to get a bigger movement. You see when it matched the forecast, 112 pip movement, not 170, right? But still a, a significant move, uh, range movement. But usually you find more volatility if it doesn't come in as expected. Uh, I see a question pop up. Uh, does this rule also apply with company reports, uh, the quarterly reports or annual reports? Uh, yes, but uh, we can't analyze the data with this tool on the stocks. I wish we could. Right now, Trading Central is where this comes from. They only offer the currency pairings. You can look at different currency pairings and see which pairing has the best effect statistically and distance-wise, and then try and take advantage of it. And so I'm showing you Euro USD because I know it has a big movement with this data, but we could be checking GBP USD, uh, USD JPY, and you might see one that has a better statistical uh, setup and, and, and go after that. 
Uh, but no, it, we don't have the indices in here. We don't have the commodities. Only currency pairings matched against the, the currency of the country that the announcement is for. Good question. But yes, you, you do see the effect on the indices, on the stocks, uh, in, in similar fashion. Not exactly the same, uh, but similar, okay? All right, so this is something you might be looking to prepare for right now. It's coming up in just a couple hours time today uh, that you could wait and see the data, see if you like the entry point in the first five minutes and trade in the direction that the data says, statistically speaking in the past, it probably should go after four hours, right? And so you have a time frame to get in, first five minutes maybe, a time frame to get out after about within four hours if it hasn't hit in your take profit. Maybe you think about, okay, maybe the momentum's done. Maybe it's only 60% of the way to your take profit. You do a partial close or close the whole thing. You know, every trader is gonna decide those things differently, uh, but it's a great tool to be able to do what's called data-driven trading, where you're just, trading off of statistics. You're not putting your emotions into it. And you know, take a trade size that's a measured risk that you already know in advance the size trade you're gonna take, uh, the distance to your stop loss you already know because you see the range movement, you can have that all prepared and planned out, distance to stop loss, distance to take profit. If the first one misses, you can even re-enter if it's still within the time frame. Uh, the, you know, the, the, the possibilities here are numerous, but a uh, very powerful tool. Now we can look also, let's get out of the US, let's look at the UK tomorrow, okay? Uh, tomorrow, some big data coming out of the UK, GDP numbers and industrial production listed as high level announcements, meaning high volatility expected with them. And this is an interesting one because uh, some of these high level announcements have big movement but the predictability is less. And let me show you what I mean. And this is how you can be selective with which announcements you choose to trade off the, of the data and which ones you choose not to. So GDP growth rate, that's a big deal. Growth, gross domestic product, it's a high level announcement. We go to the volatility tool and we say, okay, GBP, JPY, and I have it on GBP, JPY for a reason. It has bigger movements in the data Within this tool, look, 153 pip movement compared to GBP USD. Just for whatever reason, there's more volatility, larger range of movement with GBP JPY in the statistics than GBP USD. So I already did that back work, but remember I said, check the different pairings. See which ones have the types of movements and statistics that you would like to go after. Okay, so uh, GBP JPY, I'm looking four hours after the event, and let's look at if it's above forecast. Okay, 100% uh, bearish. Okay, it dropped 100% of the time if the GDP came in higher than expected. But watch, below forecast, it dropped 100% of the time. So it, it's almost, it doesn't matter with the GDP numbers. They're not, they're not relevant to the direction of the movement. It didn't matter whether it came in above or below forecast, 100% of the time it dropped either way. So. To me, I'm not interested in trading on that because it's like almost like this announcement had no bearing on the direction because no matter how it came in, the pound dropped against the yen. There was fear around it. Somehow the yen strengthened as a, as a safe haven currency and pulled it down. Uh, but at the same time as the GDP numbers, there's industrial production numbers coming in. And what we'll see is this is the one that determined the direction. GDP created volatility, but look at the industrial production statistics. If you key off of the industrial production statistics, same pairing, GBP, JPY, same time frame after four hours, if I go above forecast with the industrial production numbers, 75% of the time, the pound drops against the yen. Okay, what if I'm below forecast? 100% of the time it went up, five out of five times. That gives you the inverse relationship where it seems like the announcement is helping to determine the direction. Whereas with the GDP numbers, it didn't matter how it came in, it dropped regardless. Here you see so, some, some type of relationship where if it comes in below forecast, five out of five times the pound went up against the yen. 
Why? We can speculate, maybe because they say, hey, we're not going to have to raise interest rates in the UK, right? Same idea in the US. It's like the market is cheering bad news. Why would the pound strengthen with bad industrial production? Uh, I don't know. But the, the fact is, you don't have to know why. That's the point of this style of trading. You don't have to try and do somersaults in your mind to try and figure out why it's going up or down. You don't have to guess. You just look at the statistics. Actual below forecast, five out of five times, it went up and not just a little bit. Average range movement, almost 100 pips. Okay, and again, if you look in the first five minutes, 60% of the time it was down in the first five minutes. So look at the entry point you could have got in the first five minutes. They only went up seven pips, one pip or down even in the first five minutes. But then after four hours, they were all up, every single one of them that, that moved during the situation where this came in below forecast. Okay? It does, again, word of caution, it's not going to always be 100% of the time. Eventually, this method will fail. But it's not about winning every time. It's about trying to gain a statistical advantage so you can win more than you lose. Okay? And, and so below forecast up, above forecast down 75% of the time. Okay? And when it went, and when it did go up, it barely went up, right? It's almost down 100% of the time, just barely went up one time, okay? So these two announcements, the CPI data later today, and I would key on the industrial production tomorrow less than the GDP growth rate, okay? Now, you could say I want both of them to be the same in order to act, Maybe that makes you more certain. What I mean is maybe you want the growth rate to be lower than expected and the industrial production lower than expected, and then you'll do the strategy based off the industrial production. Maybe you want it for both of them to be higher in order to do the buy off of the industrial production. That's up to you if you wanna be more selective. But it seems from the data that the industrial production is the one to focus on to get a feel for which way it will move based on the numbers that come in. Any questions, comments? I'll pause for a moment. Okay, I don't see anything popping up, so I must have been clear. If anyone has questions on how to use this tool, just uh, please ask and I can backtrack. Okay, so uh, let's look at those charts then. Okay, let's start with the Euro USD because that announcement's coming soon. If I can have type here. There we go, Euro USD. All right, and I'll expand the chart. So, you know, sometimes I'm looking at price levels to determine in, where I might go in and out of a trade. Uh, sometimes not, depending. Uh, if I'm trading off that announcement, I, I, pretty much it's what I just showed you, right? Uh, you see the numbers come in. If you like the entry point, you give it a go, okay, based off of the statistics. If you're trading with that data-driven trading uh, method, you're going to risk a certain amount. You're going to go after a certain amount of profit and act kind of like a robot. And maybe you try that 25 times over the next couple months and see if you come out on top with that strategy. Could even add an MT4 account or an MT5 from, from your client area. Remember, you can add more accounts from your My Accounts section. Uh, you could add one, fund it, and trade only that strategy on that account and see if how that strategy compares in a month or two to another account that you add that you're trading a different strategy on. And just see uh, where you're finding the most success with which strategy concept. Uh, or maybe you need to adjust it a little bit, your timing. Maybe you're not trading in the first five minutes, maybe you're trading after 15 minutes or whatever the case may be. <clears throat> okay, so uh, Euro USD, we're looking at 15 minute candles. Let's look at something like four hour candles, okay? And you see, I have a price level drawn here. There's a resistance level that's pretty clear, 
okay? We see the, the price came up on the four hour candles, dropped, came up, dropped, came up, dropped, and here it is approaching again. So likely, because this has been resistance, 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 and it used to be support when it was above, okay? We see the last time it broke above this price level back here, look at the momentum it took and look how far it carried after it broke above this price level. Took momentum to break through. So it tried, didn't have enough momentum, didn't have enough momentum. It looked like it might here. Look at the momentum, size of that candle, still not enough. Maybe today's data is the, the, the camel that broke the straws back and it can have enough momentum to break through, perhaps if the CPI data comes in lower than expected. Maybe that's what would weaken the USD enough to, to actually break through this uh, level like it did back here, okay? At least that's the hope, right? If you're if you're gonna buy on a breakthrough here. So I can just simply do a pending order up here, regardless of the data that comes in. So I could be doing two different strategies at the same time, right? A technical breakthrough strategy, knowing there's big news, if it breaks through this resistance and hits this pending order, then it automatically buys. So I could prepare a pending order now. Then also to diversify, I do another trade, but only after the data comes in. And if the data goes one way, we trade one way. If it goes the other way, we trade the other way, regardless of whether it broke through the resistance yet or not, at the top or at the bottom. And, and by the way, here's the support down here. So if, if the opposite happens, it comes down, it breaks through this support, I could have a pending order here to sell. So right now, I could set up pending order up here to buy, pending order down here to sell. If it breaks the resistance, it triggers the buy. If it breaks the support, it triggers the sell. This type of strategy works if you expect that there's big enough news to cause this type of breakthrough, where it breaks through and runs. And today's CPI data could be that type of news. So you could try a breakout strategy when you see a ranging movement. Ranging means it goes up, back down, up, back down, up, perhaps breakthrough, or down and perhaps breakthrough. What causes these big breakthroughs with momentum usually is some kind of big fundamental news. And so we have that on order today, potentially, if the, fund, if the CPI data is significantly higher or lower than expected, we could see a breakthrough up or a breakthrough down, okay? Uh, so that's, in addition to using the economic calendar to trade, you know, maybe within five minutes after the announcement, like we were showing, uh, based on the data, you also could do a pending order strategy as well and have half your uh, exposure planned with these pending orders that you could prepare before the announcement now. Uh, and then the other half of your planned exposure trade size to trade on the data after the announcement. So one's a purely technical strategy but timed with the fundamental announcement, obviously. Uh, and then the other is a data-driven fundamental strategy with just looking at the data from the economic calendar, okay? So diversifying the strategy, but on the same instrument. So this one, if it breaks through before the announcement, this one's already in. If it breaks through in the first five minutes and goes flying up, you're already in on the pending order. Okay, so uh, different possible strengths with the pending orders, but also weakness because in the first five minutes, maybe it spikes up, spikes down, spikes up, spikes down. Uh, that volatility is there in the first five minutes. So while this has a potential benefit to get in earlier, it also has the risk of getting caught in the spikes before the real movement occurs. So, uh, but that's the idea of diversifying. There are some strengths with one strategy, but also weaknesses, and there are different strengths with another strategy, but also different weaknesses. And you diversify for that reason, maybe. So a breakout strategy with pending orders you could prepare now, and then watch the data come in to trade later, okay? If there are any questions with what I'm saying, please ask. I haven't seen since, since early on any other questions come in except what Jeffrey uh, typed. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm ready to answer questions if you have them. Now, uh, for tomorrow, the GBP, uh, and by the way, I set up these price levels as close 
to the announcement time as possible, right? I don't want to draw these lines yesterday and put my pending orders in yesterday if my point is to try and take advantage of today's announcement, the momentum that might come from it, because leading up to this, it could have been teasing that price and dropping, teasing and dropping, and you might trigger the trade before the momentum, and then it pulls back and you keep losing. Uh, whereas uh, if you set up your price lines just before the announcement, kind of like now, and you have then your pending orders set up beyond the important price levels, hopefully they don't get triggered with uh, false movements that can occur before the announcement, okay? All right, so GBP USD, I might wait till tomorrow then to set up uh, the, the announcements on, or, or the trading on the, the GBP announcement, okay? And let me search from here. And let's bring this up then. So expand this, let's get rid of the order window for now. Uh, GBP USD, four hour candles. Let's pretend right now is just before the GBP announcement tomorrow. It's not, but let's pretend it is. Uh, I'm drawing my same lines and here's my four hour candles. Here's the resistance right here that's been having trouble breaking this week. Resistance back down, resistance back down. So if it breaks above this line, with the announcement, wow, that could be a breakthrough like we saw back here. I mean, look at this breakthrough. It carried up another large number of pips. It tested it once. If it hadn't hit your take profit yet and it pulled back, okay, you lost once. You could set it up again. It breaks through again, and there it went, okay? So uh, this could have been a winner in the past with the breakthrough. Again, here, once it broke back above, it went flying up. We're on four-hour candles. So that's a large number of pips up to here. And then we're looking at it again. Potentially, if it breaks through, it could run. So pending order above the resistance up here and pending order at the bottom below, which wherever you identify the support, I see it here, support and up. Again, here it hit and up and again at the same price here and up. So this looks like an important price level that if the numbers go the other way and it breaks the support, you could have a pending order down here ready to sell. But again, I would cut off these pending orders if it hasn't broken through the support or resistance within a short period of time after the announcement, you define the time. We were looking at data that was four hours, right, on the economic calendar. If within the first couple hours it hasn't made that move, then maybe the momentum wasn't enough to create the statistics we saw in the economic calendar. Okay, we saw 169 pip movement within the first four hours. So. If, if in the first hour or two, it hasn't started that movement, uh, I, I might cut off the pending orders at that point. Okay, so this is, this is uh, the setup, maybe how you would do it, pending orders on each side, and also watching as the announcement comes in to see if you wanna do that data-driven trading that we looked at uh, based off the industrial production numbers tomorrow out of uh, the UK, all right? Similar example, just different different country, uh with with uh the strategies uh question on usd jpy from uh one of our listeners here what is your opinion uh on the usd jpy uh today in the news we could easily be looking at usd jpy instead of euro usd so let's do that real quick good question uh so let's go back to the calendar Let's look, remember the yen tends to be a safe haven currency and so does the USD. So I don't particularly like that pairing because when there's fear, they both tend to strengthen. And when there's happiness, they both tend to be weaker. And so you have kind of a strong horse against a strong horse or a weak horse against a weak horse. So the movements maybe they're fighting each other. Whereas if you have Euro USD, when the USD strengthens uh, with fear, people tend to be selling the euro to buy the safe haven USD. So one is strong when the other is weak, you get an easier movement and, and vice versa. The other is weak when the other is strong, depending on how the news went. Uh, not always, but in general, you, you have these types of relationships when you have a safe haven type currency and one that's not, okay? 
so USD JPY, uh, not my favorite pairing because they're both safe haven type currencies, but let's have a look at the statistics. Doesn't have to be what I'm speculating. Let's look at the data. So uh, if we look at today's announcement, inflation rate, we saw the, the, the great statistics on Euro USD. Let's look at USD JPY and see how has it moved. USD JPY, if it comes in above forecast, nice statistics still, okay? 100% of the time, if this comes in above forecast, the USD strengthened more than the yen. 234 pip range movement, even larger movement than, than the Euro USD. So that looks great on the upside if this comes in uh, above forecast. If we go below forecast, 75% drop, 203 pip movement. You might have sold me on this. I didn't take the time to, to look at the USD JPY. Uh, it looks like just as strong statistical advantage with this announcement and even larger pip movement in the first four hours. Now let's look in the first five minutes. Maybe this is the issue. In the first five minutes already, it went 127 range movement. It moves quicker. <laughs> uh, and, and what about in the, uh, if it comes above forecast in the first five minutes, already moved 175 pips, okay? Now one of them didn't, one of them hesitated in the first five minutes. The other already went the full distance almost, 200 pips almost in the first five minutes. So. USD JPY more volatile. Statistics are just as strong, but in the first five minutes, you have to pick your entry point. If it already went before you get a chance to trade, this one 200 pips almost, then you probably pass. But in the first five minutes, this one dropped, and you're expecting it to go up after four hours, then that's the entry point you wanted, right? So maybe harder to trade on because it moves further faster but if you catch the right entry point looks like a great one to trade on so very good question uh let's see below forecast in the first five minutes one of them only one out of the eight in the first five minutes gave you time to trade before it went flying everything went flying uh 75% of them ended up down. And actually the one that went up in the first five minutes never came back down, okay? So we've got quicker movements on the USD JPY in the first five minutes already moving 70, 80% of the total movement. Whereas the Euro USD in the first five minutes was a bit less volatile and you had some time to get your trade off. So good question, uh, but the analysis here seems to be in my opinion, a little easier to trade the Euro USD than the USD JPY, but certainly huge movement. And if you can catch the entry point you want in that initial time frame, then hey, looks like huge potential with a great statistical advantage still. All right, great. Listen, guys, I think this is a good place to stop. Uh, we've been going for nearly 40 minutes, so I know we we're kind of acutely focused only on these two announcements, but I, I thought it was a good idea today to keep it simple, to look at less, but be more uh, inclusive on the two that we looked at with, with uh, explanations, because sometimes uh, rather than trying to be a jack of all trades, a master of none, it, it's better to focus on, on some specific things that you can master without trying to do everything. Okay, so we looked at two specific types of strategies to use on one announcement today and one announcement tomorrow. Uh, if you plan to do it, good luck. Uh, obviously, no guarantees, manage your risk, uh, but huge potential with these movements, that's for sure. All right, everybody, thank you for joining. Good luck with the trading uh, and, uh, you know, manage the risk on the downside, but uh, when you're comfortable, go after those potential profits. All right, bye for now.